Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. This is Ethan. Today I'm extremely excited. This is guy Daniel Mercury. Today it's very different. I want everyone to listen to what this guy is saying. This episode is gonna be very different from all the other candidate. Not not candidate anymore. You ran for governor, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so as you said, my name is Daniel Mercury. I'm a father. I am a husband. Um, I am a small business owner and I'm a veteran. Yeah, I ran for Congress in the 25th District in 2019. Uh, from midsummer, I had uh, made my declaration and uh, ran for that district. Uh, and then right after that, <clears throat> I was exposed to the corruption. And so in 2020, uh, the early stages, uh, right when we got locked down, I had made my declaration to run for governor for the 2022. But it just so happened that the recall took off in 2021. So, of course, I threw my name in my hat in the ring for that race. So I ran for governor in 2021 and the prime in this last 2022. And I believe it to have been really a, a journey that has brought me to this point in really understanding how the corruption works hmm. and why everything is falling on deaf ears and what it is that we're missing and what is it that we can do to fight back, take it all back. But the journey is gonna be tough, it's gonna be difficult. And I've realized that people need to first understand how it all began and where we're at now so that we can point the correct needle in the direction on how we're gonna fight back rather than just trying to fight every little attack because we are being attacked in multiple different angles from multiple different perspectives from different agencies and government agencies. We need to have laser-like focus and we need to aim it in the right direction so that that small little crack, we can put in that right amount of pressure to make everything crumble and fall so that we can get our state back. Yeah. Because technically, at the end of the day, we never lost our freedoms. They're still here. Mm -hmm. It's just we're not educated enough to understand what we need to do. I think you brought up a amazing, a, a great point. The sucker hall from the from from your speech, right? Uh, yeah. I, I see. I remember. Yeah, um, a lot of Christian think that uh, we can just pray about it, and then uh, things will happen. And a lot of they actually, a lot of Christian believe in a lot of those conspiracy that we see on TV. Mm -hmm. For example, like uh, Trump can come back, and then he's gonna rule for another twelve years, and stuff like that. The biggest problem I see with our political thing is that a lot of us conservative, we are we are very passionate, but we don't know the law and we don't know what's how to deal with all these corruption and everything. What's your point on that? And then uh, can, what can we do to educate us ourselves more? Well, backtracking to what you first asked was, you know, uh, as Christians, you know. You know, we think we're just going to pray and give it to God. But if you just take the story of David and Goliath, well, David had to pick up a physical rock to defeat Goliath. So you can't just pray about it and then do nothing about it. You actually have to go out. Jesus didn't just pray to God the Father. He went into the towns and he preached. He didn't just sit on the side and do physically nothing. He was physically involved. He was physically out there. He was going from town to town with his disciples. David had to pick up a rock, you know, because the armor was too heavy for him. He couldn't just, you know, swing the sword. So he picked up what he knew that he could do, and he took down Goliath. So he had to physically, you know, not only just, you know, pray to God and have faith in God, but he had to physically involve himself into doing something actionable. So it's, it's really inaccurate to say, well, I'm giving it to God. No, that's not enough. In fact, I, I actually loathe the people who say, Daniel, you've got my vote. That's not enough. I don't care for that. You need to do more because a lot of people too who say that don't actually vote. A lot of people don't involve themselves because, well, they just can't get political, right? Well, I hate to break it to you and your audience, but everything is political. Yes. Do you like paying your gas? Well, that's political. Do you like what's happening to our educational infrastructure and the indoctrination with our children? Well, that's political. Do you like how property taxes are increasing? Do you like the fact that government is, uh, you know, overtaxing us? You know, they're, they're, they're double dipping, triple dipping, quadruple dipping. Well, that's political. 
right? So everybody says, well, I just can't get political. I hate to tell you this, but everything involves a political aspect of our lives. Driving down the street, you like the, the road tax and how everything is, is still, you know, uh, broken and, and uh, destroyed because, well, Gavin Newsom took the, the money from the road tax and he put it into the bullet train to nowhere. Yeah. And wh what's going on with the bullet train to nowhere? Exactly. It hasn't been completed. We're still dealing with all of the issues and trying to create some sort of infrastructure that, you know, we're all supposed to go green. And yet at the same time, they keep, and when I say they, corrupt government keeps nickel and diming us. That's political. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your paycheck and you're wondering why it's getting smaller and smaller or you're having to pay out more and more, our, our natural gases, our electricity, everything is going up. That's political. But you just can't get political. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going on with, with everybody who doesn't want to involve themselves because, well, somebody else will take care of it. Or, you know, I just don't know this stuff. Yeah. I just don't understand politics. You don't need to understand politics. You just need to understand the laws. So I always tell people, you know, do you have a Bible? And a lot of people who are Christ believers say, well, of course I do. Okay. Do you, do you have one of those Bibles where it's super highlighted? You know, you write notes in there because, you know, you're, you're trying to better yourself as a human being so that you can be better to your neighbors, more loving to your neighbors. Because as Jesus tells us, you know, one of the two most important laws that he, he told to his disciples, one is to love your Lord God. The second is to love your neighbor as yourself. So I understand that. But then you also have to understand the laws of the land. And if you don't, well, then you are no better than the corrupt mm -hmm. because you're doing nothing. Doing nothing is just as bad as doing something wrong and or trying to do something right. But you're not actually educating yourself because, well, you just don't have time. And you don't want to you don't want to ruin the current friendships of the people that you have. Right. Maybe you have good friends and you have good family and you have you have people in your life that, you know, you just don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. And yet, but they, they hate what's going on. Well, then you're at fault mm -hmm. because you're doing nothing. Yeah. So you have to get involved. And I ask people too, I always ask them and I, and I brought it with me is, you know, I always ask people, you know, I always ask about the constitution. Mm -hmm. This is our genius forefathers wrote it in such a way that you can put it in your pocket. And I always ask, you know, people say, have you read this? And of course, you know, you get hands that go up because most of us in elementary school have been taught you know, uh, the basic foundation of this. But then it's an elective when you get to junior high and high school and, of course, college. So this really isn't study. So when I ask people, do you continue to study this? No. Everybody's hand goes down. So my next question is I always ask people, okay, well, now that you do that, do you study the California State Constitution? And again, almost nobody will raise their hand. Because half the people that I come across didn't even know, one, that we had a California state constitution. <laughs> and that's what happened to our audience, too. <laughs> Number two is a lot of people say, well, I knew we had a California state constitution, but I'd, I've never read it before. Mm. Well, why not? Even the people who are claiming to be patriots and fighters and they're go constantly going to the board of supervisors and they're screaming to high heaven, you know, and they're getting together with prayer groups. But if, you're, if you agree we are at war, yes. which I would agree we are at war. You don't go into war with a knife. You go into war with every ammunition, every firepower that you have. And I say, if we're in war, well, then the Constitution is your, is your rifle. Mm -hmm. And your California State Constitution is your close hands 9 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you understanding and learning both? Because statutes, mandates, regulations, and policies all have to be in agreement with the state constitution. The state constitution has to be in agreement with the constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. More so the supreme law of the land, what we call the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Because after the Bill of Rights, things start to get a little wonky. Things start to get a little bit out of hand. They're not in agreement. That's the same thing with the California state constitution and other state constitutions. There's, after so many different articles, they start to get out of agreement. But how is that possible? And that is because corrupt government is trying to change the language. And that changing of the language is designed to try to change your perception so that you can start to feel more agreeable with what they're about to do. And that is to pass repugnant legislation to get what they want to continue to run the state like a business. Mm -hmm. So they need to remove that which is unalienable.
This is why I tell people, if you believe in God, then you have to understand that the Declaration of Independence was the new covenant that our forefathers made uh, to God when they created America. Wow. That is why they write that we are, in the Declaration of Independence, it stipulates that we are of nature and nature's God. And when they're, what they're telling you is, is that God made all of this. They understood that. And that we have been endowed by the Creator. Endowed means that you've been gifted, granted, given mm -hmm. with certain unalienable rights. And it says among them were certain unalienable rights. Among means that there's more. But they narrowed it down to three. Life, well, a lot of things cover life. Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness means happiness isn't up to God. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians say, Lord, please, you know, I just want to be happy. That's not up to him. That's up to you. Yeah, I think that's the biggest, biggest problem too. A lot of people, a lot of Christians, they just want to live happy. And they think that believing God uh, should bring them happiness, which it should, but not in the way that they think that like, oh, I'm just going to be rich. God is going to bless me with all these money. And then when they see something corruption happen in the government, they just go like, ah, don't worry about it. Just pray about it. How do we have happiness with our political situation right now as Christian right now? Because we are surely being persecuted and a lot of Christian thinks it's fine and they just don't care. Because of their lack of understanding, they're simply sitting around waiting for them to be raptured. Yeah. Christ is coming. We see the writing on the wall. We believe that maybe as a Christ believer that, you know, we're not going to have to go through tribulation. But yeah. that's not actually true. Some people are pre-rapture. Some people are pre-tribulation. Mm -hmm. Some people are, are post-wrath. Some people are uh, post-trib, pre-wrath. But when you read the Bible and you let the Bible interpret the Bible, there are at least 10, 10 verses that stipulate that, and after the tribulation, will mm. there be a great coming up? Now I'm paraphrasing, but it says the word, and after the tribulation. He's telling you, you're going to go through the tribulation. So when you read Revelation, you are going to go through it. Mm -hmm. But you will not experience wrath because God says that, that you are not driven to his wrath. He stipulates when the wrath is going to happen. So mm. there is a distinctive difference between tribulation and his wrath. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go through it. So stop trying to avoid it. In fact, God tells us that we need to fight the good fight and that we as believers are required to be watchers on the wall. That means you have to sound the alarm. So if you know something is happening, you don't, you don't get to just sit on your hands and do nothing about it. He's telling you, you have to. In fact, if you do nothing, the blood is on your hands. Whereas if you do sound the alarm, then, you, then the blood is not on your hands. Mm -hmm. So, But these are the things that we're not doing. These are the things that we're too afraid of. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to involve government into our lives because they're already involved in our lives. We just, we want, so we fall into the boiling frog syndrome mm -hmm. where we get used to it. A little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more freedom keeps getting chipped away. They keep undermining the Constitution and our sovereignty. If you're a foreigner and you came here, you should be furious. If you were born here and you understand the Constitution, you should be furious because somehow this new generation, and I hate to say it, but you know we've got a, a generation of self-entitled little turds who all need safe spaces and want to be called a pronoun. I think we need to be, uh, we need to be ready to be more offensive mm -hmm. because the truth offends. Yeah. And this is part of the reason why I think that we need to involve ourselves so much more to get educated. Well, how do we, where do we start? You pick up the constitution and you start studying it. Mm -hmm. You pick up your state constitution and you start studying it. And you start seeing where things align biblically. And most of the constitution aligns with Bible principles, Yes. which most people don't realize. Yeah. So it's really not hard when people say, well, you got to separate you know, church and state. That's actually not written. Mm -hmm. That's not in there. That's a falsity. That's not true. So again, this is why people need to understand the First Amendment. So it just basically stipulates that government isn't going to impose upon a religion on the people. But it never said that you can't have your own faith and that mm -hmm. you can't practice that and be in office practicing your own faith. And that whenever you draft legislation or whenever you execute it or you have to rule on it with our three branches, everything must be in agreement. Otherwise, it's already been ruled multiple times. I have over 30 Supreme Court cases that stipulate that anything that is repugnant is null and void. There's no debating that. There's, it's not up for argument. So start with the Declaration of Independence. 
start with understanding that we are of nature and nature's God, meaning we fall under common law, not civil. Mm. Everybody's out there fighting for civil rights, not unalienable rights. I am not a candidate that's running for governor to fight for your civil rights. Those are garbage. They're nonsense. Civil rights are immunity and privileges given out by the government under eligibility through the contract clause. Mm -hmm. But unalienable is that which cannot be taken away, cannot be bought, it cannot be sold, it cannot be transferred, and you cannot contract it away. But the American Bar Association and most lawyers will tell you, yeah. you can contract your rights away. Yeah. If you engage in the contract clause, which is Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution, then it stipulates that you are waiving your unalienable rights. But that is an exploitation mm -hmm. and also stipulates that in Article 1, Section 9 of the California State Constitution. When you know this, then you know exactly where corrupt government is operating. Mm -hmm. And that is where you need to push back, fight back and understand it is your duty. It is your responsibility to get up off your hands and push back, fight back, get these people out of office. And then, of course, there's a number of ways that we can do this. But as believers, you have to understand that your faith in Christ means that you are going to be giving up a huge portion of your life. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, we have to understand that we are going to experience tribulation, not just revelation tribulation, but throughout life. When people say, God, I want to be happy, that is not up to God. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we pray and we say, Lord, please make me strong. Well, what do you think he's going to do to make you strong? He's going to give you trials. Yes. When you say, you know, Lord, you know, please help me to understand this. Well, now he's going to force you into something that's going to make you have to educate yourself so that you understand what you're enduring. Yeah. Lord, please, you know, I don't want to be poor anymore. Well, then I guess you better get up off your behind and you need to <laughs> go find a career, a job, a talent. When we talk about the stories of the talent, right? And the master gave a certain amount of talents to each one, you get three, two, and one. Well, he wants you to take the talents that you have and go do something with it. Instead of the last one where the servant takes his one talent, he buries it in the sand, he calls him a fool. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he did nothing with what he was given. It doesn't matter, he's trying to tell you, it doesn't matter if you have multiple talents or you have one talent. Everybody has something and you can multiply that. Yeah, and I think that a lot of Christians get it wrong that this is still a political thing. Right now, I can guarantee you this is not a, just a political, this is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual warfare. Yes. Basically, the biggest news right now is pride flag was painted on the floor and then a truck drove over it and then this is national news. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to know that that's a religion. The leftist idea, it's a religion. You cannot go through a pride flag without like worshiping in it and then a res pay your respect to it. So what can you tell the Christians that these are actually a religious war? We need to remind ourselves, remind our churches, remind the youth that the rainbow is a covenant that was made uh, with Noah yeah. and to all mankind. And the seven the color. <laughs> yes, right? So the rainbow is what God gave to us after the flood that he would no longer flood the earth. It was a covenant. It was mm -hmm. a promise. Mm -hmm. We need to remind everybody what the rainbow stood for. Now, nobody thinks of the rainbow as the covenant made between man and God to no longer flood the earth. Now you think of the gay community, the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. We don't think of God anymore. Yeah. We don't think of God's words and God's laws and God's promises. We think of this new generation of promiscuity or sexual perversion, right? And predation being normalized. Yeah. All of these rainbow flags are symbolizing and trying to get you to accept it. It's not okay. It's a perversion of the covenant. Everything that Lucifer touches is a perversion. He needs it to be that way. He needs you to be confused. So he mm -hmm. confounds what is. And what is, is, is you are X, 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 Y, your chromosomes don't lie. I don't care what you feel. If I ask you to be 65, you can't. Why? Because you can't take some sort of magical wand and pretend to be something that you're not. This is why when you look at the LGBTQ plus community, you know, you have to ask yourself, well, if you're in a transitional phase, why is it that a, a transgender individual never wants to transition into a pan gender, a size gender, gender neutral, non-binary when they go to their doctors? Because it doesn't exist. You can only be male or female. You cannot be anything else. So again, it's X, 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 Y, but Satan needs that to be confused. Satan needs that 
to be confounded. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, he also confounds the laws. So wherever the language does not exist is where he operates. Wherever it's not said, corrupt government will twist and fill the void. Whenever you remove God out of your life, evil will always fill the void. It has to. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's either left or right. You are either for God or you're against. You cannot ride the line. And this is the people and Christ believers who ride the line. They are individuals who do not want to fight back. They would rather try to skirt through the middle. But God's telling you, you're going to have to pick. So you can either fight now, today, or somewhere else, later, tomorrow. Either way, the fight is coming and it's technically already here. We are in an agricultural war. Mm -hmm. We are in an educational war. We are in a spiritual war. The one war that we have not engaged in is an arsenal war. Yeah. And that is coming, whether people like it or not. Whatever the next red flag is, the next pandemic, whatever you want to call it, it's irrelevant. It's coming. Where are you going to stand? Are you going to be on the side of what is righteous, what is right? Right? God knows we're all sinners, so don't sit there and think that God can't use you. We all have a past. We all have grown to where we're at right now. I'm not a saint, but I can tell you right now, I do not stand with what is going on right now. As a veteran, I didn't fight for communism. I didn't fight for Marxism or socialism or the other ism in this world. I had no desire to come back to this country and say, you know, I hope socialism takes over. No, I like my sovereignty, my freedom. That's what the Constitution stands on. I love this country, my state. I've already put all my efforts and my very life on the line. I don't owe anything to anybody. I do it because what's happening is wrong. Mm -hmm. And veterans like myself didn't fight for this. Yes. We don't want to fight again. In fact, I've spoken to a lot of veterans. We're, we're not interested in picking up arms again. A lot of them just hope that those of you who are uneducated get educated and understand it's your time to fight too. You need to fight. But a lot of us now are realizing that, you know what? A lot of people don't understand what war looks like, what it smells like, what's actually brewing behind the corners and what's about to really crumble before our eyes. And now you're really going to be stuck. Your gold's not going to save you. Your silver's not going to save you. Your cryptocurrencies aren't going to save you. Cash is not going to save you. Christ tells us to build up our wealth in heaven, in Jesus. But we're so focused on just trying to safeguard ourselves that we, we forget about our neighbors. Well, you're not loving your neighbor then, right? Hmm. And so a lot of people say, well, again, I, I, just, I, I don't want to rock the boat because I, I love everybody. You can't love everybody. You can do your best to try to love your neighbor, but you, you got some enemies too. Yes, love your enemies, but you're going to have to fight against them. And if your love is preventing you from pushing back, then maybe you have the wrong kind of love. And this is something that we don't talk about. Amazing stuff. I, I love it. I'm so interested. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is great. And this is exactly what we need. And you're still running for governor, right? Yes. What's your plan next? So right now, my current plan is, as people say, gosh, you're starting so early. You're, <laughs> you know, you're almost uh, a little less than four years out, right? It's three years and so many months out. That's the point, is that I realized is that a lot of people need to wake up to what's going on. A lot of people need to understand that uh, we have a duty to fight back. Well, it's no good for me to run for office if I can't give you the tools to fight back at the local level, mm -hmm. right, at the county level. Mm -hmm. So right now, my campaign at this moment in time is going around county to county. There's 58 counties in California. I'm trying to hit at least one county twice this whole year. Some I'll hit more than once. And then the following year, do it again, but to the other counties that I haven't touched. I'm trying to hit at least 25 this year, 25 next year not including you know, radio, podcast interviews like this that will allow me to get out to other communities because of the fact that people need to know what is going on, how we got here in the first place, what can we do at the local levels to fight back. Yes. Right? So I'm putting on a PowerPoint presentation to each of these locations, to each of these Republican groups, patriot groups, conservative groups, or anybody who's willing to listen to figure out and understand because questions are coming in, phone calls are coming in. Why is this happening? Why are my board of supervisors, my city councils, Daniel, why is everything falling on deaf ears? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Didn't they swear the oath of office? Yeah. I don't understand. I don't need to know a lot about the laws, but I know that that's egregious. That's wrong. 
I don't understand. Help me understand this. So I'm going around trying to help everybody understand to the best of my ability so that when it does come time to vote, we've somewhat maybe potentially taken back the integrity of our election. Yes. We have involved more people so that there are more eyes to ensure that we're going to have a fair elections, these following you know, election cycles in 2024 for the presidential and the next gubernatorial in 2026. Yes. So that way, at least, even if you don't like me and you like the other candidate, I can look back and say, I at least provided every county in this state with some sort of educational arsenal so that they can actually... Uh, file lawsuits, remove repugnant representatives, and actually involve themselves in such a way that they can crush these repugnant laws that are egregious. Mm -hmm. If I don't do that, then what's the point? Yeah, I need to take all the knowledge that I have and give it and, dis and disseminate it out. And then you take that information, test it out. I always tell people, don't take my word for it. Test the information out, right? Test everything before you believe in anything. You have to. I always tell people, if, if you just take my word for it, you're a fool. Yeah. You have to educate yourself so you know. And I always tell people, listen, I don't have all the answers. And I'm just one person. I can't fight 58 counties. But you can in your county with your group. Let me at least help you understand where we're at and really where you need to point that needle. And find where you're most passionate about. Maybe you're hip to education. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are hip to what's going on at uh, your board of supervisors or your mayor, right? Or you understand that your, your assemblyman or your state senator is doing something egregious. And that's where you want to point your needle and you want to focus on those laws and you want to focus on going after them. Maybe you want to file a lawsuit, right? Maybe you want to get them arrested because they have violated their, their oath of office. Maybe you don't understand how that works. Maybe you want to get with your sheriff and you want to try to you know, educate them on what they can and cannot do because a lot of them are uneducated as well. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Maybe you want to run for office, right? Or maybe you want to put together educational groups so that you understand who it is that you're going to support when it comes time for trying to get somebody in office. But before you even do that, you yourself should know the laws better than the people that you think are going to represent you. Because if you don't, well, then shame on you. Yes, yes. Because you're perpetuating the problem. Thank you. This is a very good education. Uh, all these stuff, you will give us a link and then we can put it on, right? Yes. Yeah, so if you want to look at a little bit more about me, if you want to understand uh, where I stand on some of the issues, maybe check out my own policies, you can go to danielforcalgovernor.com. So again, that's Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, Cal, C-A-L, for F-O-R. So Daniel for calgovernor.com. So again, D-A-N-I-E-L, for F-O-R, Cal, C-A-L, governor.com. And that's where you, know, you can see all my social media links. Um, so if you're not sure where I'm at, Telegram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble right now. I think that's probably going to be my primary. I know a lot of people are want me to be on all over the place. I was like that with uh, the previous campaigns, mm -hmm. but, but it was a lot to handle. Okay. It, it was a lot to handle. So, But I encourage people to, if you don't like my policies, don't call me and email me or tell me that my policies <laughs> suck. Instead, call me, tell me, email me that, you know, tell me what I can do to improve upon them. Because we are in this fight together if you really want to take back the state and get back our freedoms, which have really never left. It's just you have a better idea or maybe you have a better idea to refine it. God bless you for doing that. Please help out because I can't do it all. And neither can you. Mm -hmm. We have to work together, right? Yeah. And this is really what it's about. So I educate everybody in that way. And, uh, and if you've got an idea or something that I should talk about, send me an information. I will talk about that information. I will do the research on that topic or something that you're not sure about. And I'll bring it to the forefront and put it in one of my videos. So that's a way that your audience can find me. All right. Well, thank you for coming, Daniel Mercury. Yeah, I have to get that right <laughs> Yeah, in order to vote for you. So everyone remember this name, Daniel Mercury. And then when the time comes, go vote for this guy. And uh, before that, Educate yourself with United States Constitution and California Constitution, and we got a country to save. So thank everyone for watching. Uh, this is AI News. Ethan, uh, we'll see you next time.